on Friday, May 11th, 2012, at 3.30 p.m., Detective Sergeant Gary Giroux hosted a press conference announcing that David Ludwig, 33 years of age, is wanted for first-degree murder of James Massey. If you know his whereabouts, please contact 911 or anonymously Crime Stoppers. Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to update the media with regards to Homicide 16 for 2012. We've identified a suspect uh, as a result of our investigation that has been very, very active uh, in the last 48 hours. Uh, a number of uh, area residents have uh, come forward with information. They've been extremely helpful and we appreciate that. And as of right now, the suspect that is wanted uh, for Mr. Massey's homicide is an individual by the name of David Ludwig, L-U-D-W-I-G. He's 33 years in Toronto. He's currently wanted on the cat and white warrant for first degree murder. And uh, based on the nature of the offense, as I indicated, that a, a shotgun was used to shoot Mr. Massey within Oriole Park uh, the other night, that being uh, early Wednesday morning, shortly uh, after midnight, approximately 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, I would consider Mr. Ludwig armed and dangerous. My usual advice uh, to this individual is to speak to a lawyer, uh, take direction from that lawyer, and surrender yourself immediately. Uh, my, also, my usual advice is that uh, anyone that assists or aids or abets Mr. Ludwig to prevent his apprehension uh, is a criminal offense. And those individuals will face criminal charges themselves should they be caught assisting or evading Mr. Ludwig in avoiding his arrest and apprehension. Uh, paramount concern right now of the homicide squad is the protection of the community. And as a result of that, I encourage Mr. Ludwig to surrender himself uh, ASAP. Uh, he's described in the following way. He is male white. He is, as indicated earlier, he's a 33 years of age. The earlier description that I gave the other day was in his late 20s. His appearance is in the late 20s, early 30s, 5'8 to 5'10. He is unshaven. The uh, photograph that's released today is an accurate reflection of what Mr. Ludwig looks like currently. He has vis visible facial hair. He is of a medium build. He uh, was uh, wearing, at the time, a black hooded sweatshirt. He had baggy jeans, and as indicated in the previous press release, this individual was last seen walking southbound from the shooting scene within Oriole Park, southbound towards LaSalle's Boulevard. The, uh, in the interest of the protection of the community, as I've always indicated, the right thing for Mr. Ludwig to do is to surrender himself. It's the right thing for everybody, it's the right thing for him, and it's the right thing for the community. Uh, our interest is protection of the community, and that's our paramount concern. And as a result of that, uh, I have all of the policing resources available to me to apprehend and locate Mr. Ludwig, and I will use them uh, to my advantage to find him and apprehend him in a very, very aggressive way. So if he's listening to this broadcast, I encourage him to walk into any area police station and surrender himself. I'll answer any questions that I can. Why do you think he's going to surrender himself or, or heed your, your words of caution if he's already suspected of, of shooting him? Well, I think uh, I, would, I would describe Mr. Lowe as the most sophisticated individual. So as a result of that, you know, the borders are being covered and uh, you know, he hasn't got a tremendous amount of resources that he can turn to. I've already given a warning to people in his uh, circle of friends and influences not to, uh, not to help him in, in, in any way. So. The best case scenario for him is to surrender himself and um, you know, get the direction of a lawyer, which we usually advise people to do, and I recommend that he does it as soon as possible. Do you have any more information on the relationship between the victim and the suspect? I do. It's not something that I can comment right now to form part of the evidence, but um, I do understand more than I did the other day with regards to the connection that does exist. Okay, so you still think it's a targeted uh, shooting, that he was, they had a long argument? Yes, does that all still stand? It does, I suspect, and, and do believe that there was an argument between these two individuals in the park, that they were alone, and that uh, Mr. Ludwig Love was armed with a shotgun, and during that argument, he fired on the deceased, and he died instantly. The nature of the argument? Uh, again, I can't comment on it. I suspect I, I know now what it is. It'll form part of the evidentiary basis of the prosecution, but it's nothing I can comment on. Okay. Any more questions? Um, Canada wide warrant, and you said uh, uh, Border Patrol notified you. Do you think he's left the country, left the province? I don't. Uh, I think he's within the Greater Toronto area. As a matter of fact, I think he's within the city of Toronto. And I don't believe uh, he's the type of person who really have the means to, to uh, flee. But the 
concern is that uh, it's a possibility, and as a result of that, the orders will be alerted, and his description will be provided to them. And you know, really, quite frankly, based on the resources that I have within the policing community to find him, you know, the best case scenario for him is to surrender himself. There's just really no place to hide. Now, Gary, I give this a shot. I don't know if you can answer it, but obviously, you were working with uh, a description of the suspect and you walked away. Now you have the suspect. Can you give us some insights of? Was that the public who came forward with the name, or did you just dig it out, or did you give us some insight how you came up with this, this guy? Yeah, without without uh, you know revealing uh, how the investigation evolved completely, is that we do believe that the individuals that's seen by the series of 911 callers walking southbound from the playground area where the shooting took place is this individual, and it's as a result of area residents who uh, who made observations of this individual, and then we were able to. Um, to garner additional information from witnesses that narrowed in on Mr. Ludwig fairly quickly. And as a result of that, we feel very, very comfortable that uh, he's the one responsible for this. And we've also been able to determine uh, that there was uh, there were issues between these two men. And as a result of that, uh, that, that again will form part of the evidentiary basis. So the baggage that I spoke about the other day, um, the pre-existing uh, issues that uh, exist, exist between these two individuals. Does the suspect have um, any prior criminal record? Uh, he has um, some contact with us in the past, and it's, it's a little bit dated, actually, right now, but he does have previous contact. And the only reason I'm not releasing that photograph of him that we do have in our possession is it's dated. Can you talk about what kind of contact, I charges? No. Okay. So this, this is a new photo that you've obtained? That I've obtained from another source, yes. Okay. It's more accurate with regards to his, his uh, physical description which was uh, a description that was provided to us by an area resident on that particular night, and it fits Mr. Lund Ludwig completely. If this was isolated, is the public still in danger? Uh, the, the only danger, uh, you know, from, from the homicide's perspective is that uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Ludwig could possibly still be in, in possession of a firearm, and as a result of that, I have some concerns. Those are all the questions. Great. Thank you very much. We'll get that on the website right now. Great. Thank, Thank you very much.